Hello and welcome to this how-to video where we're going to be taking a look at how to delid Intel 12th and 13th gen CPUs using the EK delid tool. So first we'll take a look at the contents of the box. We have uh, the Allen key to operate the tool. We have a spludger which is very helpful for prying away the IHS at the end and also uh, cleaning the glue from around the PCB and we have the tool itself which is comprised of three parts so there is a screw which pulls everything together there is a slider which can be reversed and used in both directions and then there is the body itself uh, you will notice on the body itself that there are two triangles marked with a number one and a number two and the same thing on the slider and these correspond with the position of the CPU. So when the CPU is placed against triangle one then the triangle one side must also be facing up on the slider. One other thing to pay attention to is the screws which are installed in the end of the slider. You must have these for 12th gen CPUs and they limit the range of movement for the IHS. But for 13th gen screws, you can remove them and it will make things a little bit faster. This can be used for any 12th or 13th gen Intel CPU. Today we're going to be using the 13900K. And so for the 13900K, we can actually remove these two screws from the slider. Uh, these are necessary for 12th gen CPUs only and they restrict the movement of the slider because there are some SMDs underneath the IHS and it's possible that the, that the indium sheet could touch them so uh, we have these two screws pre installed and it won't move quite as far. Today we're going to take them out and then we're ready to set things up. So first I will remove the screws from the slider Uh, before you proceed, while this is the right piece of equipment for this task, please bear in mind that this is an extremely risky process. Uh, it will void the warranty of your CPU and this can be used wrongly and it will lead to damage of your CPU if it's used improperly. We will advise all of the necessary precautions, but just pay attention, watch it through before you begin and watch it again while you're doing it. Uh, we're going to be using heat to help soften the indium. Uh, and we'll be very, very careful when removing glue, when removing the IHS itself. So please keep that in mind. Okay, so with the slider prepared for 13th gen, which means having the screws removed, I'm going to get the CPU ready. Uh, this is a brand new CPU that we have today, but if you have a used CPU, make sure that you remove any thermal paste residue just so it doesn't get stuck somewhere inside the tool and, and change how things come together. So uh, clean it up with a Q-tip and alcohol as necessary and load it for the first time with the triangle against index position one. So you will look for the little triangle on the IHS, the triangle on the PCB, and make sure that's against triangle number one inside the tool. And then the first time we insert the slider, that's also going to go with the triangle in position one in the corresponding corner. So that means triangle one will be facing upwards and that should slide easily over the IHS and we'll install the screw and just tighten it a little bit. Uh, so now it's loaded in, we're going to be putting this inside an oven and that's just a precaution that everything gets as soft as it should be. So the indium softens and the glue around the PCB also softens. We're going to put it in the oven at 70 degrees and check how long it takes to get the whole assembly up to temperature. And we'll put it in back just for another few minutes so that we know it's hot on the inside and then uh, we'll use the tool to complete the first movement. Uh, you could also use a heat gun to soften things and it's also possible to delete it without applying heat at all. Uh, but we just want to use every precaution at our disposal so that it goes smoothly because this is a lot of stress, at least initially, to put onto the die itself. Oven time? A little longer than a few minutes later.
Okay, so our oven is now warmed up to 70 degrees Celsius, which is around 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're gonna put the full tool assembled with the CPU inside in position one. It's just pre-tensioned a little bit. Uh, it's not tightened down yet. And we're gonna take it out once it's warmed up to temperature. Uh, we'll let you know how long that took and then tighten it all the way. Okay, so now the CPU has been inside for approximately 30 minutes and everything's up to temperature. We're ready to take it out and swiftly perform the first movement, which will shear the die away from its original position. Now the tool has cooled down enough that we can touch it. We're gonna take it apart, return it to position two, put the slider back in the other way up, and in doing so, we will return the IHS back to its original place. So you can see here that it's quite nicely moved away. You can see the glue on the bottom side. Everything looks nice, and now we're gonna effectively push it back to the middle, repeat that process a few times just to make sure that the indium lets go. This time it should be a little easier, even though it's cooled down because it's because it's been sheared once, uh, it should be easier. So now you will see the triangle is in the position two corner. So we will use the slider with triangle two facing up. It will go to the same corner and when we tighten this all the way, the IHS will be back in the same place again. Uh, this would work exactly the same if you had a 12th gen CPU, uh, it just wouldn't be moving quite as far. So this is much, much easier than the first time. And there it is all the way, just to be sure. I'm gonna now repeat the first step again. So the CPU will go back into position one. Now the IHS is back in the middle. So the slider will also be position one up again, and we will slide the CPU back. If at any point the screw um, becomes tighter, watch out that you haven't cross-threaded it during the process. Uh, you shouldn't need an Allen key until it's actually moving the slider. Now it feels really easy, so. There we go, back to triangle position two, slider in position two. If you get this wrong, um, and the slider is in the wrong place relative to the CPU, then you risk pushing off the SMDs that are around the outside. So pay very close attention every time. Uh, because it's moving so easily now, this is gonna be the last time I move it and I'm gonna leave it hanging off the side because it's easier to uh, gain access to pry the IHS and to take off the glue if it's hanging off the edge. So there we go. I've not been lucky enough to have one yet that just falls off. Uh, so I'm gonna be using this floss now to cut some of the glue away around the outside and make sure that it's just the uh, indium that's holding it back. So once I get it under one corner, it should be straightforward. Uh, so now all of the glue is definitely being cut. The indium has been sheared five times in this case, and it's still perhaps a tiny little bit warm on the inside from being in the oven. I'm going to attempt to lift the IHS. Be careful even with the plastic tool, I advise that you use the plastic spludger. Uh, be careful not to insert it too far that it goes all the way to the die. And also don't point it at any of the SMDs which are on the outside. Try and keep the point of it facing up and away from the PCB so you don't do any damage. Uh, but I'm gonna start on this corner which hangs off slightly. 
Uh, so that corner raised a little bit and I'll move to the opposite corner. And there we go. All it took was a very gentle pry on the top edge. I think uh, that method worked very well to soften everything. It looks good so far. We're gonna be cleaning up the glue on the PCB and we're also gonna clean off the remains of the indium sheet from the die itself so it's prepared for our D-Lid products. Okay, so now we're gonna be cleaning up the remains of the indium sheet with this uh, liquid metal which is supplied in all of our direct dye products. As you can see inside it comes with some q-tips which are very helpful for uh, both spreading the paste and uh, kind of boiling up the remains of the indium when it forms an alloy with the liquid metal and also some alcohol wipes to finish thing off so we'll install the needle onto the syringe so it doesn't go everywhere and we're gonna apply just a little bit onto the top of the surface and wait for it to do its thing So after the first round of conductanaut, we cleaned it all away with alcohol and q-tips and then repeated it. Eventually the uh, indium really softened and we could scrape it off with a spludger tool and then uh, once all the big chunks were off, the last application of conductanaut pretty much cleaned up the whole die. It looks a little bit patchy from where it came off in big pieces and where it came off forming an alloy. Uh, but it's completely flat and it doesn't have any uh, raised bumps of indium left behind. So now we're going to clean away the glue that's left with a splutter tool. Um, be very careful not to dig into the PCB or use anything too sharp and be exceptionally careful when going past the SMDs which are down here on the side and just there at the bottom. So don't hit those, uh, but it is important when preparing this for use with our direct dye products that all of the glue is gone uh, because it will affect the overall thickness of the assembly and how deep the cold plate comes onto the dye. Okay, so now the PCB is completely clean as well and free from all of the glue and any contaminants that were on the surface. I finished it off with Q-tip and an alcohol just to make sure there's no liquid metal left behind and everything is looking good. Um, this is now ready to go and be used with any of our direct dye products. So come back and check those out in the next how-to video.